Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Olympian, ISL GM, author, awesome person, Caitlin Sandino. Um, Caitlin, I guess let's just get your general thoughts of how you've been holding up the last few weeks during this, you know, very, as we said, unusual quarantine period. Yeah, you know, I will be completely honest that (laughs) when this all first started, it was actually my birthday. It was um, March 13th, Friday the 13th. Okay. Right then and there, I was like, oh, <laughs> something's going to be weird this year. Yeah. And I, I wasn't quite sure what to think. And I was like, well, I still want to go to dinner. And I still like, you know, we have plans. And then the more information I was getting, I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't be going out to dinner. And maybe I should, you know, reduce the size of our plans and the people involved. And it wasn't until that following week where I was like, okay, we need to shut it down, you know? And that's when the shelter in place started that week. And at first I think I was in shock. Like I really couldn't wrap my head around that this was happening. And then I feel like the, the, the spread of everybody freaking out about getting into the grocery store and the toilet paper and the paper towels. And cause at first I was like, Oh, that shouldn't be a big deal. And then everybody else freaked out. So I'm like, then it was rubbing off on me. And I was like, well, then maybe I should go find paper towels and toilet paper, you know, and like getting like frozen foods. Like I got like frozen burritos. My husband's like, we don't eat frozen burritos. I'm like, just in case, I don't know. You know, like I didn't even know what to buy. And then like, I feel like I kind of was like, okay, take a deep breath, like comprehend what's going on. And I was okay. And then one morning we have an exercise bike in the house. Thank goodness. I was on the bike and I was reading just a story that just hit me really hard. It was about a woman in Belgium who was 90 and she was in the hospital with COVID and they went to give her a ventilator. She said, no, I've had a good life. Put this on somebody younger. And I just lost it. I just started bawling and I'm not a big like crier and I'm not like a, (gasps) I was like, (gasps) and I feel like right then and there I realized like, I'm not okay. And I think as athletes, we're so used to being so tough and we have this exterior shell and that we're in control and that we don't really show too much emotion. I feel like it was the first time where I really let myself express or just let it out. And I'm like, I'm not okay. Like I am sad and I'm worried and I'm scared. And that story really upset me. And I came out and I talked to my husband and I was like, I'm bummed. And then I think it was like kind of like that light bulb moment where it's like, you have to give yourself grace in these times and it's okay to not be okay. You know, it's an expression that you're starting to hear, hear more and you need to allow yourself to have those moments, but that can't be all consuming either. Right. We can't have those times over and over again or else that's just going to eat away at you. So just kind of trying to keep perspective, like let yourself feel, let yourself be upset, annoyed, um, you know, angry even, or sad, upset, scared, but then also try to take the positive, you know, the, the silver linings in it all. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on right now, what I'm grateful for. And um, I'm trying to be just really supportive, you know, with family, friends, other swimmers have been reaching out within the swim community quite often. Let it be for ISL, my DC Trident team, or just, just swimmers that I feel like I have relationships with. Like I can't imagine what they had to go through in that roller coaster. And I just want them to know they're not alone. And I'm here if they want to talk or just vent or cry or just letting, just know that I'm thinking of them. And so that's been helpful for me, just um, trying to take a step back, give myself grace and just adapt and adjust, like try to find out what my new day-to-day like routine can be. Sorry, yeah. that was so long-winded. Welcome to Kayla Tana now. All she does is talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, so the positive, you know, one silver lining for me through this has been that, I, that I've gotten to do these interviews and, and people can get long-winded. And, you know, normally I'm on deck talking to athletes two or three for two or three minutes right after right. the race and you're like yeah yeah it was good yeah it was great yeah. and um you know now <laughs> not a lot of words <laughs> right and now not only can can you know i i and the interviewee get into it a little more about this or that but people actually have the time <laughs> to, to, to watch it and to listen um, yeah, absolutely yeah so no no <laughs> No answer too too long, Perfect. <laughs> or no answer that is like you know we need to. Um, so that that brings me to an, and you said something interesting. Um, you know, kind of being okay with not being okay, and and realizing the situation with your that you're in, and giving yourself grace, which as athletes, 
not a common thing. You know, you have, you, as, a, as an athlete, you have to persevere, you have to push through. Right. Um, you know, as someone who is prepared for, for multiple Olympics, um, I'm sure you had roadblocks mm. on the way there. How, how would you, um, you know, do you think if you encountered a hurdle like this, mm. you would be able to give yourself that kind of grace and compassion? Yeah, that's a great question. It's actually something that I've kind of thought about. Like, what would I be feeling like, or what would I like be mentally in this situation? And I think for me, what I come to the conclusion with, had this been Caitlin Santino circa 2000, like just went to my first Olympics, still going to be a senior in high school, have all of college. I think I would be okay. You know, the plan was to continue to keep swimming. That chain, that plan isn't changing. You know, maybe I'm going to have to, maybe we'll start school later. You know, I don't know what that really looks like. You know, we don't know what that looks like come the fall, but I don't think anything would have really changed. It would have been like, okay, try to stay fit out of the water. Let your body have this break. Enjoy time with your family. You know, try to work on those interpersonal, you know, maybe avenues you want to improve. Had this been circa end of Caitlin's career, 2008, I've been like, mm, I think I'm done, you know, because I knew that I wanted to be done in 2008. Um, I wanted to, wanted it to be my third Olympic games, but unfortunately my career came to an end at the Olympic trials and I was so ready to be done. You know, I was really beat up my body hurt. I was sick all the time. And quite frankly, I just didn't love it as much as I used to. I mean, I was in it for a long haul and I spent some long, hard races that were very challenging to train for. So I don't know if I would have been like, okay, like, let me see if I can make it to 2009. I don't think I would have been able to hang on. Um, and then the middle of my career, 2004, that that would have been interesting because I wish I initially thought I would be done in 2004. Um, well, sorry, 2005 after my college um, season, mm -hmm. my senior year. Uh, but because of the way things went worked out, I ended up going pro and I signed a four year contract. You know, I continue to swim. So I think had this happened, I would have just pressed on. If I was going to be done after college, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But what's so neat is there are some, you know, financial opportunities out there, um, specifically what ISL is doing now, providing a monthly uh, stipend, the solidarity program. So that's got to help a lot of athletes that are like, we're kind of maybe in this in between, like, not only do I have to train for another year, but I have to be financially responsible for myself to train for the next year as well. Right. So right. that's all like a two point, like, you know, avenue there. So I think it depends which circa Caitlin's and no swimmer you ask. I would have different opinions how I would have responded. Yeah. And have you had any, you know, with the discussions you've had with athletes, have you been able to kind of give them some of that perspective? Yeah. You know, actually I was having a conversation earlier today and, you know, with a certain individual, I just said, you are so talented. I don't think you should give up if you still have the passion for it. Cause like I just mentioned, my passion was pretty faded out in 2008 and I was, I was good being done. It was bittersweet. It was sad, of course, but I was so ready to move on. So if you still have that passion and that desire to continue, go for it. And I really do think that if we change our mental aspect of this, if we tr really try to capitalize on the positives, you can set yourself up to be like, I have another year to get stronger. I have another year to be more, fun more mentally prepared. I have another, you know, you can always give yourself more of that one more year to be better type of mentality. So I feel like that it's it, right now it truly is about the mental side, right? Cause physically we're all in the same boat. I mean, some of the people can jump in pools or whatnot, but we're not really getting some like awesome training in right now, but what you're doing outside the pool is on you and how you're handling it up here. That's on you. And I think that's, what's going to, you know, be the make or break. It's how you are channeling it through here. Yeah. Yeah. So for you on, you know, kind of on a day to day now yeah. um, being an ISL GM, what's yeah. that look, what, what's that looking like? You know, the beginning of April was fantastic because I was so busy with signing our new team, um, which, you know, helps the days go by much quicker when you're communicating with athletes all day. And um, I'm speaking with my head coach, Cindy Gallagher, more than probably anybody in my family. Like we're always communicating <laughs> and whatnot, which is great because Cindy has such a positive outlook on everything. And she's so passionate about the sport and just being there for our athletes. Um, so that was really great. I, 
it was, um, it was nice to connect. It was nice to kind of introduce myself to some of the, the seniors that had just graduated, well, seniors that are graduating or, you know, had their last meet. Um, I really enjoyed that. And I really enjoyed connecting with our athletes. Um, things are starting to settle a little bit because our rosters are almost complete. Um, and now it's just trying to find things throughout the day that, like I said, keep me busy, keep my mind busy. Um, I try to, you know, work on things for myself as well. And now we do have the time to, you know, pick up a book or pick up the phone. Like I just spent, I never, I don't really enjoy talking on the phone that much, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> and my best friend lives in, um, in Michigan and I just picked up the phone and FaceTimed her and we only spoke for two hours yesterday. I don't normally have two hours to dedicate, you know, and it was amazing. We both felt so much better after it. And, um, so it's, it's been interesting finding the new normal. Actually, you'll love the story. Yeah. So people, people ask me all the time. They're like, so do you still swim? Like, do you miss it? Do you get in? I'm like, no, I never swim. <laughs> and everybody's like, it's so, even my husband, everybody's like, my husband's like, everybody always asks me like, oh, does your wife still swim? And he's like, no, like she literally does not get in the pool. Doesn't like to get her hair wet. Doesn't like to be in this chlorine, you know, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we have a really small pool and it's, you know, <laughs> it's cold. It does. It's heated off of our sun. Well, it just started getting really nice in Southern California. Like it's beautiful out now. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing a lot of biking and just kind of things. And my back's been kind of bothering me. And I'm like, maybe I'll go jump in that pool. So I'm not even joking you. Like it's the smallest pool. I put on my suit, my cap, my goggles, and I just did like underwaters. <laughs> and it takes you like four breaststroke kicks to get to one side yeah. or like seven flutter kicks. I did like 30 underwaters, like breast fly, breast fly. And I did a couple <laughs> breakouts. I was cracking up because I like never swim. I jump in this tiny little pool that's not even heated, but it felt so good. It felt so good to be in the water and just like that feeling. I, I mean, all the swimmers out there probably know what I'm talking about. It's, I don't think I'll take it for granted as much anymore being able just to go jump in a pool. Yeah. So, dude. Yeah. Especially now, which it's, yeah, it's just so bizarre you know, the, the lengths people are going or are having to go just yeah. to get in a pool. Yeah. Um, you know, even if it's a little baby pool in someone's <laughs> backyard. <laughs> Seriously. I was like, this is classic. And it's something like I would never, I would never be like, Oh, I can't wait to go find a pool. But in this time I just wanted to jump in and it felt great. Yeah. <laughs> just got out of the pool guys. Can't tell you the last time I said, this is like a post swim interview for me right now. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So, so ISL, uh, you said your roster is almost complete. Um, I have a few questions, you know, the obviously, <laughs> uh, can you tell us anything about your roster? You know, obviously if you can't tell us names, I understand, but, yeah. um, how are you feeling about it? Are you still, um, equal pay for everyone? You know, can you give us any sort of details like that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled with the roster that I have this season. Um, I, I love the way my husband put it. He said, preseason rankings looking good, moving up, moving up, you know, so I'm really proud with how we look on paper. But the interesting thing is, I don't know what to expect. You know, right mm -hmm. now the plan is to compete in October. It's like, Right. I don't know how you're going to swim in October. I don't even know when you'll be able to get in the pool again. You know what I mean? So again, everybody's in the same boat though. Um, so now with the ISL solidarity program, everybody does get paid the same. So it is a monthly stipend across the board for all teams. So it is equal pay. So, um, you know, DC Trident did that specifically last season. We are the only team to do that, which I'm really proud of. Um, and then moving forward for this season, since it's going to be a very unique season and condensed season, uh, the plan is to have a four to five week camp in one location for the 10 teams to train and compete within that time frame. So really, really hoping that, you know, we're, we're able to travel by October and we're able to find one location that everybody uh, feels safe being in, but obviously it's, you know, athletes, um, safety and priority is number one. Um, we just want to support their, um, their ambitions and their goals and their dreams of, of the Olympic games and training for that. And, you know, we have, some, I have some swimmers on my team that have already made the Olympics. Now they just need it to happen, you know, cause they're on, a, on other countries. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm really, really proud to be a part of ISL during this, you know, it was fast acting. They were on it. I mean, as far as a professional sports team that is obviously very new to be able to come up with a backup alternative plan that quickly and 
um, you could tell it was like something that the athletes needed. Like they needed something to be excited for and motivated for, and they kept getting all this bad news. And so it was so rewarding to pick up the phone and be like, Hey, I would love to offer you a spot on, you know, DC tried it. And like, yes, thank you so much. Like some of these comments and feedback, it's so like rewarding, like how grateful and excited these swimmers were to either get asked back because they were on the team last year or, or new to DC tried it this season. But, um, yeah, I can't tell you names yet, but I'm very excited. You know, we'll come together on a, a unity on the plan with that. But, um, you know, I wasn't sure if a lot of swimmers would be up for it, but um, as far as Team USA, there's a lot of swimmers that are looking forward to participating, and um, you could tell, like, the, the more international swimmers were gun-ho about it from day one. Um, I think it's just a little bit of a different culture. Um, that's different for the U.S. to, you know, leave for four or five weeks and train in a different environment with a different coach, And um, but I think it's also so, um, so um, just incredible that ISL is doing is offering the home coaches to join us as well. So somebody's coach wants to come out for a week, two weeks, three weeks, come on down. You know, it's a, the more the merrier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that does happen, that sounds like, I mean, that just sounds like it would be such a cool right? happening. Like it needs a reality show, obviously. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm already, like my wheels are already training. Like, yeah, I got to get be there. down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so in terms of signing the athletes, was there, was there like, and we talked a lot about this last ISL season, was there like a date where it's like, okay, you can go after athletes, you, you oh. can start calling now, <laughs> or you know, what was that process like? Because, I, yeah. Chaotic, like so chaotic, <laughs> because, because we were starting the process basically like a week or two, or two before this all started. Okay. So it was kind of like a free for all. And then it's like, no, stop. No, what's going on? Now there's yeah. rumors that the Olympics aren't happening, you know? So it was like, ah, what do we do? You know, because our season was planned for post Olympics, you know, we right. were set up for 10 <laughs> meets across. Like, I mean, I was supposed to be in Paris the second weekend in September with DC tried it, you know, it was like, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so just the unknown, you know, obviously we had a halt, but me personally, um, we were supposed to be recruiting kind of in the mix of when NC2As was starting to the rumor of it shutting down. And I just, um, I felt uncomfortable approaching the seniors that had just been told you're getting no NC2A because I felt like I needed to give them time to process and grieve or be upset or angry or decide what they want to do. And I didn't want to be like, Hey, there are Caleb's in an OG on the DC <laughs> Trident. Why don't you join my team? And they're just like, yeah. my world just got flipped upside down, you know? Right. So I wanted to just kind of tiptoe around that. I reached out when you're ready. I'm interested. Um, you know, some, some people I heard from right away and some, Hey, thanks for the space. You know, so glad to connect. I've taken a week and let's chat. So for me personally, I'm like, these athletes have been on a, a, just an emotional roller coaster yeah. from their NC2As, then Olympic trial or Olympics, Olympic trials, you know, it was just all the tier pro swim series. I mean, and my schedule too, like, you know, I was slated to do Olympic trials and I was gonna be at Mission Viejo for tier. And it's like, well, then my schedule's crumbling before my own eyes also. So, you know, like, again, it's one of those things that are, this doesn't just affect me and this doesn't just affect my neighbor. Like this literally affects the whole entire world. And I think, you know, as humans, we all process differently. And for me personally, I needed some time to collect myself and I wanted to be respectful for what others were going through as well. <laughs> oh, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, how's my... There you go. Um, Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, an, a perfect example on my end of that was that I just talked with US, another USC alum now, Louise Hansen. Oh, yes. Who, um, I had messaged her like pretty, pretty, maybe a week after NCs were canceled um, when I had just started doing this. And she was like, hey, things are kind of up in the air. Like yeah. maybe like, you know, just give me a few days and we can figure yeah. something out. I was like, cool. And then totally. she just reached out again sometime this week and was like, sorry, you know, <laughs> there's ready. a lot going on. But yeah, I mean, we talked and now, you know, something so cool is that she's going to go to Loughborough, I think that's how you say it, university in, in England um, to get her master's. Oh, yeah. And she's going to compete for their college team while getting a master's and also compete in the ISL. Oh, which, wow. You know, that's incredible. Like the dream. I feel like, 
Uh, so Andrea <laughs> Vaseos, he's going, I, I think he's going to same school, yeah. right? Same, yes. It yeah. might even, he's yeah, doing the same thing. he was debating between two out there. Oh my gosh, too funny. That's going to be a yeah. great team. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, um, but it's so cool that those kinds of opportunities are out there and that yeah. even, you know, even though that some athletes, you know, like in Louise's case, it was her senior year at USC, two-time defending champ in the 100 fly, you know, it's like she yeah. can still kind of, you know, she still has ISL, but she can also go still and compete in a college again and yes. kind of, kind of make up in a way for that. Absolutely. It'll be a completely different experience, but still have that feel. Yeah, definitely. Mm, that's cool. Um, yeah. So you've talked about, you've had a little more free time to just kind of do some smaller things. What, what have you been up to with that free time? You know, it's kind of interesting for a person like myself who hates puzzles. Um, I'm really good like with the final like 10 pieces. I'm like, oh, don't worry, I got this. But <laughs> anything else before that, my attention span is just like, pew, pew. Um, reading, same thing. I find myself reading the same sentence <laughs> over and over again. Um, I'm not very artistic, you know, so I have to do like coloring, like those adult coloring books. I've actually found those very therapeutical. Kind of that's my morning thing with grab a cup of coffee and color inside the lines a little bit. Um, I have a daily devotional that I really like to kind of, I can spend more time sitting with. Um, as I said, connecting with friends more frequently on the phone, you know, I'm such a texter and texter or in person and now to actually pick up and, and, and talk. Um, and then I'm going to start hosting just a, a very quick six, uh, episode podcast for women in sports, pup, um, women in sports podcast. It's the first women's in sports network for podcasting. So I'm really excited. I've always been on podcasts, but never hosted one before. So yeah. that's going to pick up pretty soon. So I've been trying to do my homework and be prepared <laughs> and I've always admired people that put them on because I know so much work and behind the scenes that goes into it. So now it's my turn to try it. And for me, like, it's not that I'm nervous, but it's like, I've never done it before. So it's an opportunity for me to try something new and to grow and to do my research and stay involved. Cause it's really cool. Cause obviously I'll be highlighting women and in, in, women in swimming and you don't really see that very often. Right. So I'm really excited for that opportunity. So I'll actually start recording those at the end of this week going into next week and it'll pick up in May, June and July. Um, and then okay. for me, um, personally, if you guys follow me on social media, I had one of the most incredible moments last week where we got to celebrate my sister's last chemo treatment. And oh my, it was such a surreal, emotional, moving, powerful, like really powerful because I made a couple phone calls the weekend before, tried to get like, you know, those car parades that you keep seeing and like my mind was blown to see how many people showed up and rallied at like her whole neighborhood. Like the whole drive in was just full of cars, um, golf carts, bikes, people driving through, like hanging out of their sunroofs with like posters for her. Uh, so that was like the highlight of my quarantine so far. Um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer the Monday after golden goggles. So I had spent the night in LA came home. I was really tired from that night, took a nap. And I woke up and like, my phone was like blowing up and I, I just knew something was wrong. And I, I called my mom. She's like, you need to go to your sister's house. And then, you know, our world was just rocked. And, um, she's like, hasn't been able to catch a break. Like it just hasn't been, nothing's been smooth about it. Like she's been in and out of like urgent care, ER hospitals. She had a blood clot. She's on blood thinners. Like and then to be in the midst of coronavirus, fighting cancer and going right. to your treatments. And, you know, she had, she had gotten through, um, f we've gotten through four chemo treatments and I had been, everyone, I told her what it missed one. And then the fifth one came they're like, no, you, you can't have, you know, your family there. Only your husband, you know, could be in the waiting room. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like she's literally needs me right now. And even just like, you know, the week of treatment, she wouldn't feel very well. So I would just go over and we would lay together and watch TV and she would like, you know, doze in and out of sleeping and whatnot. So she just liked the company. And then I couldn't do that. And it was just like, oh, it was such a, that was like part of, I think of like my depression in the beginning of the, the quarantine and, and the lockdown was just, I need to be there for my sister right now. Like that's my, that's my number one. And that was, that was hard for me to process. But um, that celebration after her last one last week was just like, it was such a huge milestone for our family and, and just to see how the community rallied around. But the part that was so rewarding was 
obviously I know how much it meant to my sister. Like she was just like blown away. Like she's like, I, I need to process. Like this is, I'm just so overwhelmed, just full of joy. But I can't tell you how many people sent me messages. Like, thank you so much for including me. Like that just made, like I needed that. Like other people that didn't, you know, that were there celebrating her needed that. And even like I had swimmers that I don't even know that well. Cause I posted on my social media that like that was, I'm, I moved to tears. I'm so happy for your family. And I'm like, these are people that don't, I don't even know that well, let alone my sister. And it like, people just needed that feel good story. And obviously, like I said, for my own family, like, like, Oh gosh, we needed that. But then to spread that amongst our community and just to see how everybody rallied around her was really, really special, really special. That's amazing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that is really cool. And especially, you know, in the midst of, of something like this pandemic, which, you know, isn't this pandemic, but equally as devastating. And, and, uh, and that's, that's so cool. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. Um, well, I mean, I think on that note, do you, do you have any, any closing thoughts maybe about moving forward through this, this quarantine time? Yeah. You know, I, um, I've kind of reflected on this a little bit as I'm for, for a while, I was kind of like, close. I think, yeah, like I said, I was like sad and I wasn't really on social media and people were asking me to do these things. And I wasn't really feeling like myself or perky. And I just felt like the world is again in such a, a hard, dark place right now. I wasn't ready to be like, Hey guys, join me on Instagram or, you know, now I'm finally at the place where I'm like, okay, we need to move forward. Like we can't just sit and be bummed and depressed. Like you need to continue to like, you know, spread energy and light and happiness and good vibes. And I needed to kind of crawl out of that. So for me personally, and kind of like reflecting on it, it's like, and I've already said it earlier, like just find your silver lining in every day. And I know that might be like every day, but like, yeah, like every day, literally like what was the highlight of your day? Like, was it talking to your best friend that you even talked to in, you know, a month and you guys just have to reconnect or was it my sister's parade or, you know, sometimes like today, like going for my swim was like, gosh, I can't remember the last time I did that. Like that felt so good. And like, I actually like put some clothes on for you today. Oh, that sounds so bad. I'm usually in PJs. (laughs) I actually changed out of pajamas and put some clothes on, you know, it's like small victories. Right. So I just feel like if you can find that silver lining in every day, And then that is also, you know, what you're grateful for, like acts of gratitude. And then that could carry on past quarantine, past the pandemic. I think that's like a healthier lifestyle that we all need to um, be more aware of because when we're being asked to slow down, which is sometimes, oftentimes a good thing, you could take that and implement it even when things pick back up again. Did that make sense? Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's a very good closing message. Thank you, Cole. Um, well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Caitlin. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. I hope you stay safe and sending good vibes to everybody out there. And I, I know everybody's saying this, but we're truly in this together and we will beat this. And, you know, we'll look back on this moment and be like, we'll tell our grandkids, grandkids, grandkids about this. We made it through CV19. 